Cross-tenant data sharing in Microsoft Fabric allows users to share data from their tenant with users in another tenant without copying the data. Instead, it creates a one-leg shortcut in the recipient tenant, providing read-only access to the shared data. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can architect automated cross-tenant data sharing in Microsoft Fabric. Therefore, let's get started. Before we dive into this project, I'm going to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. So let's take a look at the sample data set. So on my local laptop, I've got this sales2015.csv that contain this number of columns and just 20 records. So I'm going to come to this folder that contains the 2015 to 2020 for csv files so we're going to read this into a link as we're going to provision in the provider tenant so i'm going to come to this browser and in this browser i'm going to show you quickly i've got a tenant that ends with excel jet consult triple one dot on microsoft.com this is one of my old tenants so within this tenant i'm going to click on create new item and then i want to provision link house I'm going to call this one provider lake house and then click. So the lake house has been provisioned. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a subfolder within this folder environment. So click on this ellipsis and then create subfolder. I'm going to call this one sales underscore data and click on create. So this has been created and then I can click on that. Now I'm going to load some of the files into this newly created subfolder. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then I want to go to upload files. So I'm going to browse through my local laptop and then I want to first start with the 2015 to 2020. So I'm going to click on open and click on the upload button. So this has been uploaded. So I'm going to close this tab. And then we have the sales 2015 to sales 2020.csv. So this is the data ingested into this tenant. Now, before we can share data, it is important we enable the data sharing in the admin portal. So I'm going to click on this settings. And then I want to go to admin portal. In the admin portal, I'm going to come to this filter by keyword and set for external. So we have some couple of options like external data sharing. User can accept external data sharing. Now, in this case, we are the one that is sharing, so we are not receiving. So I'm going to click on this to expand. And then we can say users can share a read-only link to data stored in one link with collaborator outside your organization. So I'm going to turn this on and click on apply. So this is going to kick in in not more than 15 minutes. So I'm going to go to the destination tenant. So I'm going to come here to this browser, the edge. So this is named as consumer tenant and this workspace is named as provider. So in this consumer tenant, I'm going to provision a new lake house. So new item. And then I will set for lake house. I'm going to call this one consumer lake house and then click on create. So the lake house has been provisioned. Again, we need to go to the admin portal and enable user can accept external data sharing. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then go to the admin portal. In the admin portal, I'm going to come to this filter by keyword and search for external. And I'm going to expand this. So I'm going to toggle it on and click on apply. So this simply means that we can accept external data from another tenant another provider. So again, this is going to kick in automatically. So I'm going to go to this Firefox browser and let's go to the workspace. So within the provider link house provision, I'm going to go ahead and share the data. So come back here and then I'm going to click on the ellipsis for the link house. So click on that and then we can set for external share. Of course, sometimes it may not show automatically. So I'm going to click on refresh and wait for the external share functionality to be enabled in that lake house. So again, I'm going to click on ellipsis and then I can say the external data share. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to expand this files. I can see the sales data subfolder. So I can even click on this to expand. I can see all the data that we uploaded. 
So we want to actually share all the content in this sales data subfolder. So please make sure you click on this radio button to select and then click on save and continue. So we're going to provide the email address of the recipient in another tenant. I'm going to type that here. So I'm sharing this with Abiola at Cornerstone IT Solutions 918.onmicrosoft.com, which is the name of the entry ID that is unique or associated with this tenant I'm sharing to. So I'm going to come back to this Firefox. Now I can click on send, but the recipient may not get the email or the link as soon as possible. So what I do is to click on this copy link, but make sure the email address is correct and then click on copy the link. So I'm going to come to the Edge browser and open a new tab. And I'm going to control V to paste the link and press enter on the keyboard. This is going to ask me to authenticate. So I just authenticate so I can see the review and accept an external data share. So I can see the name of the folder and I can say the data type as folder. This is the subfolder and then we have the name of the tenant. So this is Excel Jet and this is the entry ID, and then we have the tenant ID. So I'm going to accept and select a location. So I'm going to actually ingest into the consumer one link, which is going to be a shortcut. So I can see consumer one link, click on that, and then click on next. So I'm going to click on these files and click on apply. And then we're going to say connecting your external data share. And then we can say you're connected to external data share, which is really cool. Now you can see this amazing external underscore sales data. So this tells me that this is actually coming from another tenant, not within our tenant. So I can click on this to expand and I'm gonna see all this sales 2015 to 2020, which is brilliant. Now we want to actually read all of this as a single flat table into the Delta table within this consumer tenant. So I'm gonna click on open a notebook a new one and i'm going to verify that the link house is attached so i'm going to click on this so i can say this is already attached which is cool now i'm going to click on this external sales data ellipses and then i want to copy the abfs path which i'm going to use to read the data into pandas data frame so i'm going to come to here and i just want to create a variable called path to link data and then equals and inside double quote i'm going to control v to paste and then press enter so we want to go ahead and use the spark data frame to read this all the data in this location so i'm going to do df equals spark dot read dot csv because our data contain comma separated value so i'm going to specify the first argument it's going to be this path to link so i'm going to type this correctly and then I'm going to come here and type path to link. And then I'm going to put in a comma. So our data contain header. So I'm going to type in header equals inside double code true and another comma. And of course, I'm going to infer the schema of the source data. So I'm going to type in infer schema equals to inside double code true. Make sure you surround everything inside double quote, otherwise you're going to get an error. So I can go on and use the display function to display the content of the Spark data frame. So DF, and I'm going to control enter to run the code. As I'm waiting for the Spark session to be initialized to start, I'm going to create a new cell, and I'm going to write this data we are reading into the Delta table. So I'm going to do df.write and then dot format so this is going to be in form of delta so inside the double quote i'm going to type in delta and then i'm going to use dot mode so i'm going to overwrite if it exists so inside double quote overwrite and then we're going to use the dot save as table so i'm going to call this one sales data you can use whatever you like as the name so once this concludes i can run this code and it's going to write the data into the lake house as a delta table amazing so we are able to successfully read the data into spark data frame so i can see the content which is cool now i can scroll down and write the data as a delta table i'm going to press Control enter to run this code okay so the command executed and then i can come to these tables click on this ellipsis and then refresh 
So I'm going to say sales data as a delta table in the make out, which is super cool. We want to create a Power BI report on top of this. So I'm going to come to the consumer tenant and then I can see the semantic model. I can see the SQL analysis. I'm going to click on that SQL analytics endpoint and I'm going to expand the schemas. I'm going to expand the DBO and then I'm going to expand the tables and I'm going to see the sales data table which is super cool. Now, I'm going to create a report. Before I do that, I'm going to quickly scroll down, come to the model layout. And then I want to quickly, just as we've done in previous video, I'm going to come to this search data table, click on the J column. I'm going to scroll down to the advanced, click on advanced, and then I'm going to choose this. Hey, don't summarize the year column. So I'm going to choose none. And then I'm going to come to the reporting tab, click on the new report, and I'm going to use the sales data as the semantic model. So click on continue. Okay, so we have the Power BI. So we can create our implicit Power BI measure. So I'm going to click on this to expand, and then I want to grab the year and drag into the canvas. And we want to take the sales, and I'm going to come to the formatting, the visual, and I'm going to go to the values. Let's just make this to be 20. And I'm going to expand. Okay, so I'm going to Control C, Control V to duplicate that visual, and let's turn this to line chart. So I'm going to come back to the build, and let's turn this to line chart. Okay, cool. So we have the um, table, and then we have the line chart. So before we go on, I'm going to press Control S to save. I'm going to call this one Sales Report. Now, don't forget, this is happening inside the consumer tenant. So I'm going to click on Save. Okay, so this has been saved. Now, I'm going to come back to the notebook because our goal is to automate this process. So I'm going to come to this settings and click on the schedule. In the schedule, I'm going to enable the schedule. And I'm going to run this every three minutes. And I'm going to specify the start time as now. And let's just come to the end time and date. Let's just end by tomorrow. And I'm going to click on apply. So we've scheduled the notebook, which is super cool. So I'm going to come back to the provider tenant. So come back to this Firefox. And I'm going to cancel this. And let's go back to the Nick House. Now, don't forget, we uploaded since 2015 to 2020 into that file menu. So I'm going to expand again. So we can say 2015 to 2020. So when I come back here, based on our Power BI report, this is also showing 2015 to 2020. So let's go back and upload more files. Let's see whether this is actually going to be a live connection or not. So again, click on this ellipsis and I want to choose the um, upload files. And let's upload 2021 to 2024. So 2021 to 2024.csv. Click on upload. So this is going to be uploaded. I'm going to close this and we're going to have the 2015 to 2024. So we're going to go to the consumer tenant, which is in this Edge browser. And I'm going to wait for approximately six minutes because it's going to take about two minutes for the data to be included in the Lake House file menu, and then the three minutes for the notebook will take place. So let's just wait approximately six minutes and see whether we're going to have the sum of sales for 2021 to 2024, as well as this line chart that shows the trend of sales over this time period. So I'm going to pause the video and continue in a moment. I'm going to click on this refresh. Amazing. So we can see we have the result for the 2021, 2022 to 2024. So this simply means our automation is working without any stress. Now let's quickly come back to the link house and see what is happening. I'm going to come back here. So when I come back to the link house, of course, I can click on this refresh. So when I refresh, I'm going to see all the bunch of the 2021 to 2024 that we loaded from the provider tenant. So this is how we can implement an automated cross tenant data sharing in Microsoft Fabric. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.